In the previous lecture, we have looked at hardware description languages in general. We have seen that in many respects, these are similar to writing programs, but in many very important aspects, they are different. The overall structure and syntax of hardware description languages may look like programming languages, but we must always be aware that this is not something which is executing line by line. In fact, it is describing part by part some piece of hardware. All parts of this hardware might be acting simultaneously and this is very different from the running of a program which executes line by line. This concurrency has to be handled in a special way and we shall quickly revise what we had discussed in the last lecture on how this concurrency is handled. Concurrency is handled by following an event driven architecture. In a concurrent system, many things can happen at the same time. We can efficiently handle only one thing at a time. Therefore, we need to control the passage of time, which is then treated as a global variable. Even though during simulation the time is passing, but as long as the value of this global variable remains constant, in simulation time it appears as if everything is happening at the same time. The time is incremented explicitly after all events at the current time have been handled. And obviously the value of the time variable represents the time during the operation of the concurrent system and has nothing to do with the actual time taken by a computer to simulate the system. You can have fast computers, you can have slow computers. The hardware simulation involves three basic steps. The first step involves the analysis of the description that you have given. This includes checking the syntax, etc., of the hardware description. The second part is elaboration. In this, according to the description supplied by you, the circuit is actually built up. This is a preparatory step and which sets up a hierarchically described circuit for simulation. So, there are two major tasks which are performed during elaboration. You flatten the hierarchy. For structural descriptions, components are expanded till the circuit is reduced to an interconnection of simple components which are described behaviorally. And data structures describing sensitivity lists of all elements, all elemental components are built up during this time. And it is only after these two steps are complete that we begin with the simulation of a circuit. Simulation itself is built up of two separate steps. We, during simulation, we carry out an event driven simulation. We maintain a time ordered queue of signals which are waiting to acquire their assigned values. The time variable is advanced to the earliest entry in this queue and all signals waiting for acquiring new values at this time are then updated. If this updating results in a change in the value of a signal, an event is said to have occurred on this signal. During the elaboration phase, we determine which pieces of hardware are affected by or are sensitive to which event. This is called a sensitivity list. The data structure is optimized for reverse lookup. When we build the sensitivity list, we go piece of hardware to piece of hardware and find out to which events each piece of hardware is sensitive. However, we arrange this list in such a way that we scan it event by event. When an event has occurred, we can directly go and look up which are the pieces of hardware which are sensitive to this event. Notice that hardware could be sensitive to a particular kind of change. For example, a flip-flop could be sensitive to a rising edge and not a falling edge. 
the simulation proceeds in two cycles the update phase during which all signals which were to acquire their values at the current time are updated and then these entries are deleted from the time sensitive queue only when the update phase is complete do we go to the event handling phase while updating we make a note of which signals changed and therefore an event occurred on them and then we take event by event and for each event we find out which hardware is sensitive to it and re-simulate only that part of the hardware. For each event that took place at the current time, we re-simulate all modules which are sensitive to this event. As a result of re-simulation, fresh transactions will be placed on various signals because the inputs have changed. On re-simulation, these pieces of hardware will say that my output should change and that will of course occur at a future time. So, these are inserted at appropriate positions in the time ordered queue and then this is done for all events which occurred at the current time. Notice that the events are handled at the current time, their results will show up at a future time. If the delay is given explicitly, then it will occur at a physically different time, but even if zero delay is specified, the results will show up delta times later, which will be eventually reported as zero. However, for sequencing purposes, they will appear to occur at different time events separated by delta times. When all events have been handled, we advance the time to the earliest entry in the time ordered transactions list and start the update phase again. So, we keep alternating between update phase and the event handling phase. We might want to look at it really using a very simple example. This will help, help in cementing these processes in our mind. So, let us take a very simple circuit. We have a NAND gate which receives a signal as well as its inverse. So, the input is at A and this input goes directly to a NAND gate. This input is also inverted and the inverted signal appears at B. The NAND of both of these will then appear at the output C. We intend to apply an input which is 0 at 0 time. At time 20, it will have a transition to the value 1 and then it will remain at 1 till 50. At time 50 units of time, it will come down to 0 again and remain 0 afterwards. So, let us take this very simple circuit. You will recognize this circuit as one which produces a glitch and we want to see whether the mechanism that we have described will be able to correctly predict this glitch. We assume that the inverter introduces 8 units of delay and the NAND introduces 6 units of delay. As we build up this circuit, we find that this NAND is sensitive to A as well as to B. On the other hand, the inverter is sensitive only to inputs at B at A and B in fact is its output. When we invert this list as I had described earlier, we now go event wise rather than hardware wise and then we say that events at A require re-simulation of the inverter as well as the NAND, whereas events at B require the re-simulation only of the NAND and the C is an output 
it affects neither the inverter nor the NAND. We initialize this transaction list corresponding to the input being specified by us. We specify that at time 0, A will be 0. At time 20, A will go to 1. And at time 50, A will come back to 0 again. So, this is the initial time ordered transaction list. Notice that actually this is the only case in which case this whole list is treated as if it is a transport delay. That means no pulse specified at this time will vanish. Otherwise, we will not be able to apply fast pulses to any circuit. So, the transaction list is initialized to a list and in this case, it is a simple list and at this time, it has only three entries, one at 0, the other at 20 and the third at 50. Initially, all inputs are supposed to be undefined. So, given that situation, let us go to the least time in this sensitivity list, in this time ordered list. So, if you look at the sensitivity list at this time, what is the least time? 0. So, we make our time variable equal to 0. And what is supposed to happen at time equal to 0? Well, A is supposed to become 0. Now, remember the initial value of A was undefined. From undefined to 0 is a value change. Notice that changes need not be only from 0 to 1 or 1 to 0. It was initially undefined, its value has now become 0. So, let us see what happens at 0 time and track this format that I have for the development of this circuit. We have the circuit and the waveform at the input here. What action takes place at this time will be here and we shall see the initial state of the time ordered queue here and the final state of the time ordered queue here. So, as we know the initial state of the time ordered queue was these three entries. At 0, A was to become 0. At 20, A was to become 1 and at 50, A is to become 0 again. That is all we know at this stage. Because 0 is the minimum time, we make the time equal to 0 and therefore, we update this. We are in the update phase right now. So, the only update required is to make A equal to 0. That means, initially A was undefined, B was undefined, C was undefined. Now, at time 0, A has become 0, B and C are still undefined. We do not know what their values are. Therefore, we find that A has had an event. We go around and find out who is sensitive to A. And as you will recall, both the inverter as well as the NAND are sensitive to A. Therefore, we must reevaluate the outputs of the inverter as well as the NAND. So, we go to the inverter and tell it that look, your input just became 0. What should your output be? The inverter says that please, if my input has just become 0 and the current time is 0, then please make my output B equal to 1 at 8 units of time because its delay is 8. Similarly, we go to the NAND and tell it look, the current time is 0 and A just became 0. So, the NAND looks at the inputs and says, oh, if A has become 0, please make my output C 1 because this is a NAND and a 0 at either in, at one input is sufficient to determine its output. So, it says please make my output 1 at 6 units of time. That means, these two new trans transactions must be entered in a time ordered queue. And now, because we have handled this event at 0, this should be removed. So, when we remove this and add these two, our time ordered queue looks somewhat like this. 
at 6 units of time makes c equal to 1 that is this transaction and because this is at an earlier time it will be the first entry. Then at 8 make b equal to 1 and the remaining two entries at 20 and 50 remain as such we have not handled it. Now, what is the earliest entry in our time ordered queue? The earliest entry is for a time equal to 6 units of time. So, we advance the time variable to 6 units, skip straight from 0 to 6 because nothing happens in between. Therefore, we go to a time which is 6. So, we make the time equal to 6. What is waiting to happen? at 6. Well, at 6 c should become 1. So, we make c equal to 1. Remember, after the update at t equal to 0, a was 0, but b and c were unknown. Now, the time is 6, a remains 0, but c should become 1 and therefore, c has had an event its value has changed. Nothing else has changed. C has had an event, but nobody is sensitive to C. C is just the output. So, all we do is that we make C equal to 1 and do not have to do any re-simulations. So, therefore, we make C equal to 1 and remove this entry from the time ordered queue. No new entries are entered at this time. Therefore, at the end of it, our time ordered queue looks like this. The entry for 6 has vanished. We still have an entry for 8 we, and we have the old entries at 20 and 50. I am making a graph, a diagram of the evolution of A, B and C here. So, A is now at 0 and C has become 1 from x at 6 units of time. Since 6 units of time has now been handled, we have removed this entry at 6. This is the remainder of the time ordered queue. The least time on this time ordered queue is 8 units of time. So, we advance the time variable to 8 units of time and let us see what happens when we go to 8 units of time. The earlier time was 6 and at the end of that transaction A was 0 and C had become 1, B was still undefined. At 8 units of time, what are we waiting for? We want to make B equal to 1. Therefore, we make B equal to 1 and we notice that B has had an event. If it was earlier x, it has now become 1. So, who is sensitive to B? Because B has had an event, we must go around looking for the, those pieces of hardware which care that the value of B has changed. And we find that only NAND is sensitive to B. The inverter is not sensitive to B. The inverter has its output at B. So, therefore, we had to re-evaluate only the NAND. So, we go and tell the NAND that look the value of B just became 1 at the current time which is 8. So, this is, this is the story that we repeat report to the NAND. The NAND knows that its other input is 0. So, it computes its output with these new inputs and it says oh A is 0 and B has just become 1 then please make my value c, my output c 1 at 14 units of time. Notice that the value of c is already 1, but that does not matter. It will place a transaction on c now at 14 and say that my value should be 1 at 14 units of time because its delay is 6 and the current time is 8. So, therefore, the output will appear at 14 units of time and the output which will appear will correspond to A equal to 0, B equal to 1 and therefore, C should be 1. 
So, this is the transaction that we enter in a time ordered queue. This is the new transaction which has gone into our time ordered queue and this transaction is now discarded because it has been handled. So, therefore, the new entry is at 14 make c equal to 1. We have now handled the time equal to 8, nothing else remains to be done at 8 and therefore, we advance the time variable to the least time in this time ordered queue. This happens to be 14. So, we make the time equal to 14 and let us see what happens at t equal to 14. The previous time was 8. At that time, A was 0, B was 1 and C was 1. At 14, we have a transaction which says please make C equal to 1. But C was already 1. So, therefore, there is no event. Even though the transaction has fructified, it has placed a value 1 at C. But the old value of C itself was 1. Therefore, even though there is an update, there is no change in value and therefore, there is no event. No sensitivity is triggered and therefore, no re-evaluation is required. So, essentially, we say that all right, we know that we were supposed to make c equal to 1, c is already 1, no change is involved, no re-evaluations are required and therefore, we just remove this transaction. Now, we are left with only two transactions, one at 20, the other at 50. Watch this place because that is where we are plotting the evolution. A became 0 at 0. The current time is 14 and from 0 to 14, A has remained at 0. That is what this line shows. B became 1 at 8 units of time. So, from unknown it went to 1 and has remained 1 till this time. C became 1 at 6 units of time and at 14 we have decided that it will remain at 1, no event has taken place. So, we just advance the time to the next entry in our time ordered queue. This entry is 20. So, we advance the time to 20. The previous values of A were 0, 1 and 1 as we have just seen. Now, the time has become 20 and what happens at 20? Well, the value of A at 20 goes from 0 to 1. The other two values are the same, but A has had an event. Its value has changed from 0 to 1. So, we go around asking as before, who cares that A has had an event and because A is the input of both the inverter as well as the NAND, therefore, both the inverter and the NAND must be re-simulated, both are sensitive to events at A. So, at 20, we have made A equal to 1, this has resulted in an event on A, both the inverter and the NAND are sensitive to A. So, we simulate both. So, we go to the inverter and say the current time is 20, A just became 1, what is your output? So, the inverter says if the current time is 20 and my input is 1, then please make my output be 0 at 28 units of time because it has a delay of 8, the current time is, is 20. You go to the NAND and say that A just became 1, the current time is 20. What should your output be? The NAND looks at A as well as B, both being 1 and says please make my output C 0 at 26 units of time. So, these two transactions are inserted in the time ordered queue. They are ordered by time and therefore, this entry at 26 is the first entry which says please make c equal to 0, it came from the NAND and then the next entry is at 28, it came from the inverter 
and it says please make b equal to 0 at this time. And with that we have taken care of the event at 20 a equal to 1. So, we delete that and now we are left with a time ordered q of transactions which looks like this and the earliest entry is at a time equal to 26. So, we say that please make the time variable equal to 26 now. So, we advance the time variable to 26 and let us see what happens at 26 units of time. At 26 units of time, remember at 20 A had become 1, B was still at 1, it had not acquired its value of 0, there is a transaction waiting for it to become 0, but B was still at 1. C was also at 1 and the waiting transaction at 26 says make C equal to 0. So, the old value of C was 1, the new value of C is 0, therefore C has had any event. However, no module is sensitive to C, it is not the input of anybody, therefore no re-evaluation is required, no update is required. Therefore, we just make C equal to 0 and remove this entry. So, now A has become 1 at this time at 20, we are currently at 26 and at 26 C has become 0, B is still awaiting to be updated because the delay of the inverter was 8 and it is scheduled to become 0 only at 28. No update is required anymore because nobody is sensitive to C and therefore, we simply remove this having made c equal to 0. Therefore, we are left with a time ordered q which looks like this says at 28 make b equal to 0, at 50 make a equal to 0. So, we advance the time to the lowest entry in this time ordered q and now we go to the next time which is 28. So, we have advanced the time from 26 to 28, a has remained at 1 and at this time B acquires its new value, it goes from 1 to 0, C remains at 0. So, therefore, the waiting transaction at 28 is make B equal to 0 and this results in a value change for B. B goes from 1 to 0 and therefore, has an event. So, this is the event that I am talking of. So, B has had an event who is sensitive to B? Only the NAND is sensitive to B. Therefore, we must re-simulate the NAND. So, we go to the NAND and say that B just became 0 at a time of 28. The NAND has a delay of 6. So, it says if B became 0 at 28, please make my output 1 at 34 units of time. The current time is 28, B just became 0, the output was recomputed to be 1, but this value should occur at 28 plus 6 equal to 34. So, this event is then inserted in our time ordered queue and this entry having been handled is removed. So, therefore, this entry goes away and this entry comes in and our time ordered queue now looks like this at 34 make c equal to 1, at 50 make a equal to 0. So, therefore, this is the least entry in our time ordered q and we advance the time to 34. So, this is what happens. At 28 a was 1, b was 0, c was 0. At 34 we have a waiting transaction which says please make c equal to 1. So, we make c equal to 1, we notice that c value has changed, it has had an event, but no module is sensitive to c, it is not the input of any module, therefore no re-evaluation is needed and therefore nothing is inserted into the time ordered queue. We simply remove this transaction, c has become 1 now, notice that this is the evolving wave shape, a became from 0 to 1 at 20 it resulted in B becoming 1 to 0 at 28, it resulted in C becoming 1 to 0 at 26, 
and now at 28 this change in B has caused this change in C. So, the C at 34 has now become 1, but this change in C does not require anybody to be re-evaluated and we are left with just one entry in our time order Q which says please make A equal to 0. So, we advance our time finally to 50 and this is what happens. At 50, we say please make A equal to 0. So, notice that at 50 A will return to 0. The old values of A, B and C were 1, 0 and 1 and now A has become 0. So, A has had an event. Since A is an input both to the inverter and the NAND, we must re-simulate both the inverter and the NAND. So, we go to the inverter and say that the current time is 50, A just became 0. What should we do? The inverter says if the current time is 50, then please make my output be 1 at 58 units of time. This is an inverter, the input just became 0, the output must become 1 and because of the delay, it must become 1 at 58 units of time. We also go to the NAND and tell it that look A just became 0 and the current time is 50. The NAND says that please make my output 1 because one of the inputs has become 0. So, please make my output 1, but at 56 units of time. So, we insert both these transactions into the waiting transactions queue in time order. The first entry is at 56 and it says please make c equal to 1. The next entry is at 58 saying please make b equal to 1 and we have already handled this entry at 50 a equal to 0. So, this is deleted and therefore, our time ordered q looks like this at 50 units of time. The earliest entry is at 56. So, we just advance the time variable to 56. So, what happens at 56? Well, at 50 both a and b were 0 and c was 1. The waiting event at 56 is make c equal to 1, but c is in fact already at 1. Therefore, there is no event and therefore, no sensitivity is triggered. No revaluation is required. We just note that c was 1 and remains 1 and advance the time. That means, we can now drop this entry which says at 56 make c equal to 1, c is already 1, no revaluation is done and therefore, we just drop that entry and this is all that is left in our time ordered queue at 58 b is to be made 1. The current time remember is 56. Since nothing else needs to be done till 58, we just advance the time variable to 58 and this is what happens. The previous state was at 56 and a, b and c were 0, 0 and 1. The waiting transaction says b equal to 1 at 58. The time has advanced to 58 and we are in the update phase. In update phase, we actually make b equal to 1. We notice that the value of b has changed. It has had an event. Who cares if there is an event on b? Only the NAND cares whose input b is. Therefore, we go to the NAND and we say that the current time is 58 and b just became 1. Notice that the value of a is 0. So, NAND says, oh, if the current time is 58 and A is 0, B is 1, please make my output 1 at 64. Notice that C is already 1, but still we place this transaction. So, we place a transaction at 64 saying, please make C equal to 1 and then we drop this transaction. As a result, we are still left with one transaction to do in the time ordered queue. Therefore, we advance the time to 64 and make the value of c equal to 1 and let us see what happens at this time. As we have seen, the value of c was already 1. When we update the value of c, we update it to the same value 1. 
Therefore, there is no event, no sensitivity is triggered, nothing needs to be re evaluated and now our time ordered list is empty, nothing remains to be done, C remains at 1. As a result, we notice that we have correctly simulated this glitch which appears in C and which occurs at the rising edge of A. At the falling edge of B, nothing happens to C. This is indeed what you would expect in a real hardware and our system of update, re-simulate and place transactions has successfully recreated the scenario in simulation. So, therefore, this shows that this is how we proceed in our simulations. This was a particularly simple example in which there were very few transactions which were waiting at a particular time. But what happens if for one signal more than one transaction is pending? In the current example, the delays were carefully adjusted such that this complication did not occur. So, it might happen that your simulation is such that more than one transaction is waiting to occur for the same signal. Let us look at this example and see how we handle this particular behavior in our simulations. In fact, we take our old example of delay of 30 microseconds which we had done in the last lecture and then this is the rule that we follow. If the delay is inertial, a transaction scheduled for later time and for a different value results in deletion of waiting transactions which were for a different value. If the delay is transport, then all pending transactions for the same signal are retained and signal assignments are made at their respective times as we did in the previous example. So, therefore, what we do with waiting transactions when multiple transactions are waiting for the same signal depends on what kind of delays were involved. If inertial delays are involved and the transactions are of for different values, then all earlier transactions which are for a later time, they are deleted. In case of transport delay, all transactions are retained. Okay? So, the later time transaction when it, whenever it comes, it results in deletion of waiting transactions which are for a different value on the same thing. This is the rule that we follow and let us apply this rule and see whether it stands true for the example that we had done in case of the RC delay and the fiber optical kind of system delay. So, we take that same example and look at the kind of delays that we have and see whether the narrow pulse will indeed vanish in case of inertial delay. The transport delay keeps all transactions. Therefore, it is clear that all pulses will remain at the output. The interesting case is for the inertial delay and notice whether it successfully deletes the narrow pulse and keeps the wide pulse. So, let us look at this example. This is the circuit that we had discussed earlier, if you recall. We have a module which has an inertial delay of 30 microseconds. We apply an input which is much smaller than 30 microseconds and one which is much longer than 30 microseconds. Here we have taken times where the narrow pulse is 15 microseconds is 5 microseconds wide, whereas the wide pulse is 50 microseconds wide. Notice that from our earlier arguments, we expect the narrow pulse to vanish and we expect the wider pulse to appear delayed by 
30 microseconds. That means, the pulse which lasted from 80 to 130 should now appear from 110 to 160 and the narrow pulse should vanish. Let us carry out the process exactly what we did earlier. In this case, the circuit is even simpler. There is only one unit and it is there is only one input signal. So, the unit is sensitive to the input. We do not have to decide whether it is sensitive or not or whatever. There is only one unit to simulate and every time the input changes, it must be re-simulated. So, we can go a little quicker over this simulation. So, how is the time ordered Q populated initially? Well, if you look at this input waveform, you will notice that these are the major points from unknown it became 0 at 0 at 40 units of time it goes from 0 to 1 at 45 units of time it goes from 1 to 0 then it remains at 0 till 80 at 80 it goes to 1 remains at 1 till 130 and at 130 it comes down to 0 and then remains at 0. Therefore, all changes in the value of the signal must be inserted in our time ordered queue. So, the first is from unknown to 0. So, we say at 0 make input equal to 0. Next, we say at 40 make input equal to 1. Next, we say at 45 make input equal to 0. Next, we say at 80 make input equal to 1. Next, and 130 we say make input equal to 0. So, this describes the input waveform and that constitutes the initial time ordered queue of transactions. So, we start with this transaction list and proceed exactly as we did in the example before. We proceed to a time which is earliest in our time ordered queue. So, we make our time variable 0 and make input equal to 0. There is an event on input. Therefore, we ask our delay module what should its output be. So, the delay module inserts an output saying at 30 make output equal to 0. Remember, it is just a delay module it just replicates its input at the output 30 units of time later. So, at 0 the input became 0 the module says at 30 make my output equal to 0. The earliest time in this time ordered queue is 30. So, therefore, this is the output and it has said at 30 make my output equal to 0. So, we advance the time to 30 and make the output equal to 0. That is all that happens at 30 units of time and then we delete that entry. The next entry is at 40 when something happens. So, we advance to 40 and input has become 1, input has had an event. Therefore, we must ask our delay module what happens. The delay module says current time is 40, the input has become 1. Therefore, please make my output 1 at 70 units of time. And then we delete the input change. So, we have inserted a transaction which says at 70 make the output equal to 1. We advance the time to 45 and what happens at 45? The input goes to 0. Therefore, we must wake up our delay circuit because the input is its input and it says ok if the current time is 45 and the input just became 0, please make my output 0 at 75. So, we go ahead and see what happens if we have 
an entry of a transaction at 75. Now, we have two transactions waiting for different values for the same signal output. And our rule was that if the delay is inertial, then this later entry should wipe out the early entry completely. We should take no notice of this. Therefore, we just delete this without any action. Notice the output will never be made one because it will this transaction will remain. The current value of out is 0. This transaction might have taken it to 1, but because this transaction has come for 0, which is a different value, the later transaction in case of inertial delay will simply wipe out this transaction without making it fructified, without it having any effect. So, therefore, we just delete that transaction. Now, the earliest transaction is for a time equal to 75. We never visited that transaction which was for 70 because it got wiped out. So, the earliest time is 75 and what is the tran waiting transaction make output equal to 0, output is already 0. So, therefore, at 75 we say all right be happy we will make the output 0. No event occurs in any case nobody is sensitive to output. So, we just delete this output. The next waiting transaction is at 80 and it says make input equal to 1. Notice at 80 the input should become 1. So, the delay element says if the input became 1 at 80, please make my output 1 at 80 plus 30 which is 110. So, it inserts a transaction at 110 making output equal to 1. Now, the earliest entry in the time ordered queue is at 110. Output is to be made 1. So, we do that at 110 we make the output equal to 1. Nobody is sensitive to the output therefore, no re-simulation is required. So, we make the output equal to 1 and then delete this transaction. Now, the waiting transaction is at 130 when input becomes 0. The delay circuit is sensitive to the input and it says if the current time is 130, please make the output 0 at 160. So, that is the transaction that we add that at 160 make the output equal to 0. This is the only transaction left in the time ordered queue and as a result we make the output equal to 0 at 160. Beyond this nobody is sensitive to the output nothing else happens and we have emptied out our transaction queue. Let us look at it a little quickly so that it becomes clear how we have gone about this. Remember the delay is inertial, we have a narrow pulse between 40 to 45 and a wide pulse between 80 to 130. This was our initial time transaction. The input becoming 0 resulted in the output becoming 0 at 30. We make the output 30 and delete that at 40 the input becomes 1. This results in placing of a transaction at 70 units of time for output to become 1 and we delete the entry at 40. The next event is 45 input equal to 0. The result of that is that we must insert a transaction at 75 saying output equal to 0. This would result in two waiting transactions for output for different values. Because the delay is inertial, the earlier transaction to a different value will be deleted. So, this transaction at 70 is simply deleted. As a result, we are left with only the transaction at 75, which says the make, make the output equal to 0. Output is already 0. So, therefore, it has no effect. The next transaction is at 80 when the input becomes 1. The result of that delay therefore is 
that the output should become 1 at 110 that is the transaction placed by it. We advance the time to 110 and make the output equal to 1. The next transaction is at 130. We advance the transaction to 130 input becomes 0. The result is that then the output becomes 0. So, the expected thing happens the narrow pulse vanishes, the wide pulse arrives and the wide pulse is delayed by 30 units of time. So, that is a proper way of implementing our uh, delays which could be of transport or of inertial kind. We shall quickly look at concurrent descriptions. The order of placing concurrent descriptions in a hardware description language is immaterial. As seen in the example described earlier, each concurrent block is handled when its sensitivity is struck. Wherever it is placed in the overall description, we did not care where that line existed. That line was executed when its sensitivity was struck. So, then what defines the limits of a concurrent block? After all, we are going to write it in some file. If it is a single line, there is no problem. When its sensitivity is struck, we will pick up that single line. But if it is a concurrent block and it needs multiple lines, how are these lines to be executed? Where do we begin? Where do we stop? So, a multiple concurrent block has to be executed completely when its sensitivity is struck. All the lines have to be executed and therefore, the multi-line description of a complex concurrent block must be executed sequentially line by line just like a program. A hardware description language must therefore, provide a syntax to distinguish sequential parts from concurrent parts. After all, a single line of description could be a standalone concurrent description or part of a multi-line sequential code. So, multi-line descriptions of hardware blocks are concurrent outside and sequential inside. We shall look at the problems brought by this dichotomy and that we shall take up in our next lecture. We shall begin with discussion of this particular problem and then go on to learn about a specific hardware description language which is VHDL. We end our discussion of the general underlying principles of hardware description languages at this point. In the next lecture, we will look at this problem of concurrent descriptions being multiline and look up a specific hardware description language which will be VHDL. We end this lecture here.